الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم one of the ways that we can test the truthfulness or the veracity of any message or any claim to revelation is by examining the life and the behavior of the person who claims to carry the message in this case of course we're going to look at the life of the prophet muhammad may god's peace and blessings be upon him and we are going to look at the life of the prophet muhammad in an analytical sense in a rational way we want to ask ourselves uh, or pose three simple questions or three variant possibilities the first possibility is that the prophet muhammad or that any person in fact who claims to be a prophet who claims to be receiving revelation from god we can apply these possibilities to that individual or in fact in fact any individual who's making a claim about anything the first possibility is that that individual is a liar that individual knows that they are not receiving revelation from god and they purposefully go out to deceive people concerning this issue now obviously such a character such a personality would display various characteristics and that there are certain things that would necessitate the effectiveness of such a deception we'll examine those issues just in a minute the second possibility is that the individual is not a liar the individual sincerely and truly believes that they are receiving revelation from god but they are deluded they are perhaps suffering from some type of psychotic mental condition uh perhaps they are suffering some form of delusion but the person sincerely and truly believes that they are a messenger from god they are not lying they are not deceiving they actually truly believe it and such an individual will also display certain characteristics certain attributes certain ways of behaving and the third possibility is of course that that individual is telling the truth that individual actually is indeed receiving revelation from god what we want to do is apply this analytical approach to the prophet muhammad and we don't have time to examine in depth and in detail the whole life and the character of the prophet muhammad so what we want to do today very briefly is begin by discussing what the opponents of islam have said in their arguments about the prophet muhammad now being opponents of islam of course they are not prepared to accept the third alternative that muhammad may god's peace and blessings be upon him was a prophet so they have to find some other explanation they have to come to some other conclusion as to why islam is the way it is how did the information in the quran come to be the way it is how do we explain the behavior and the life and the teachings of prophet muhammad and the whole of islam since they can't accept that he is a prophet of god they must find an alternative alternative explanation now one of the uh, oldest polemicists against islam was a man called john of damascus john of damascus was a monk who wrote some of the first actual written attacks against the prophet muhammad of course in the life of prophet muhammad he suffered many attacks and many insults and many abuses by the quraysh but this was the first constructed attack against the prophet muhammad uh, and even these writings exist today and john of damascus posited the argument that muhammad had invented islam he was a liar the whole thing was contrived the whole thing was invented and in order to explain the information in the quran john of damascus said that the prophet muhammad learned it from a nestorian priest a nestorian priest the nestorians are a sect of christianity and he claimed that all of this information was learned from a nestorian priest and others have 
uh, proposed the same type of idea that he had someone from whom he was gathering all of this information maybe some priest, maybe some rabbis uh, but anyway this information must have come from some human source someone who was well versed someone who was knowledgeable in religious affairs, in legal affairs and so on and so forth who was feeding Muhammad this information and that Muhammad invented this whole religion for his own personal gain so this is one proposition now some modern writers have taken that same approach but they have tried to give the cloud as we could say a silver lining they said yes Muhammad invented Islam but his intentions were good he invented it because he found his people in such a bad condition that he, he wanted to improve their condition and he decided that monotheism and removing them from idolatry was the best path to their reformation but it still leaves the question from where did Muhammad get this information from that we find contained in the Quran and in the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad it still leaves us with the position that he must have lied he must have invented it he must have got that information from somewhere so this is one uh, particular group of uh, writers have gone down this line uh, and they obviously will not accept that the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger from God the other group has taken a different approach they examined the life of Prophet Muhammad and they said that well everything we can see about this man from his character from his personality from the way that he behaved from his personal characteristics that he displayed to his wives to his companions and so on and so forth shows that this man genuinely believed that he was a messenger of God because he did not behave in the manner and with the characteristics of a liar in fact as we have previously mentioned he was known amongst his people for his truthfulness his trustworthiness and his honesty one of the nicknames that the pagan Arabs had given to Prophet Muhammad before he claimed prophethood was Al-Amin and Al-Amin means in Arabic the truthful and the trustworthy he was well known amongst them for his honesty, his truthfulness in his dealings and his sincerity and this, these characteristics the Prophet Muhammad continued to display throughout all of his life and so they said well the Prophet Muhammad manifested this apparent and obvious sincerity and truthfulness we don't find duplicity in his character we don't find deceitfulness in his character so they said no we cannot accept that the Prophet Muhammad was a liar therefore we believe that he was deluded he was suffering from some psychotic condition uh, some form of epilepsy some neurosis that made him believe that he was a prophet but he was a very sincere individual although concerning the issue of being a prophet of God of course we don't accept that this is what they claim therefore they explain the life of Prophet Muhammad and they explain him by saying that he was suffering some type of delusion now what is interesting is when we bring both of these two ways of describing or explanation for the life of Prophet Muhammad together when we bring them together we are we are left with a problem and the problem is this is these two different ways of examining the life of Prophet Muhammad actually contradict each other the first one says that we need to explain the information in the Quran we need to explain its deep knowledge of theology of philosophy of law of religion of history of science and all of these things are manifest and clear in the Quran where did this knowledge and information come from these people say well it must have the Prophet Muhammad must have learnt it from someone but the other is that the Prophet Muhammad was honest and truthful and trustworthy so on one hand we need all the people who are trying to attack the Prophet Muhammad and say that he's not a prophet they need on one hand to say he was a liar and they need to say that to explain the information in the Quran 
On the other hand, they need to say that he was deluded because that's the only way that they can explain his truthfulness and his sincerity. But of course, somebody can't be a liar and be deluded both at the same time. You can't be a liar and be deluded both at the same time. You can only have one or the other. But they need both in order to completely and properly explain the life of Prophet Muhammad. Let's further explain that. If you are deluded and you think that you're, you are a messenger of God, when someone asks you a question or where you, when you are confronted with a problem, you don't think, oh, let me run off and ask my source of information, my rabbi or my priest who's teaching me things, because you don't need to, because you think God is going to reveal that to you. So a deluded person does not go off seeking information from someone or somewhere because that person